Today we'll be learning how to use the procedural texture provider inside the Lens Studio. Now this is going to let us access the actual pixel information from a texture and create cool lenses like this. Now this is a little more of an advanced tutorial. I am going to be using a lot of JavaScript. Now I'm going to explain how the procedural texture provider works, how to use it. But I'm not going to explain how a for loop works. If you don't have any scripting knowledge, there'll be a link in the description where you can just download the scripts and just copy and paste them into your project. But if you do want to customize them, you will need to know some JavaScript. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's jump into Lens Studio and get started with the procedural texture provider. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to be using it to sample a user's skin tone. And I'm going to be using two different scripts. I have a mapping script to visualize where to sample and a sampling script to actually use that information to extract the color information. So let's go ahead and start with our mapping script and let's start with um, our inputs. So I'm starting with a input texture. Uh, this is what I'm going to be um, using with the procedural texture provider. I just have a face crop texture that I've added and I've zoomed in a little bit uh, so that we have a nice close up of the user's face. Now next I have the image component and this is uh, the mapping preview image here. I'm going to be outputting the texture here so we can take a look. And I have a sample size, X value and Y value. Now before we jump into how this works, the one last thing I'm going to note here is this frame updated here. I don't want it to be initialized, lens turned on. I want it to run every time the frame updates because we're getting new image information. Uh, our face texture is updating as the user's face changes. So we want this to be frame updated. All right, so you might notice the sample size X, Y and a little black box here. So the sample size controls the size of that box. You go to 30, it makes it 30 pixels wide by 30 pixels tall. And then if I increase this X slider, we can see it moves across. If I go too far, so that the pixels will start to go off the edge of the image, it'll actually stop working. Um, because we're manually controlling this, that's okay. We'll just uh, not go too close to the edge. And then the Y, I go from bottom to top. So this is a percentage. So one means 100% all the way at the top. Zero means 0% 0 all the way at the bottom. All right, so we can use this to kind of choose spots to sample our pixels from, uh, but so far we aren't actually doing any sampling. Um, but let's jump into this mapping script to start to see how the procedural texture provider actually works. All right, so it's a pretty short script. Um, most of it is actually just creating the black pixel data to go into this box. So to use the procedural texture provider, we are using this create from texture method uh, on the procedural texture provider. No need to import anything or do script dot procedural texture provider. We can just directly call it. If we go to the documentation for this, uh, you can see we mainly just have the get pixels, set pixels, create and create from texture. So the real difference between these two is create is just kind of creating a blank texture you can write to. A create from texture is useful if you want to manipulate an existing texture or read information from it. Uh, so overall, pretty simple, not too much going on. And then of course we can call get height, get width because it is still a texture. Come back to the studio. Uh, you can see we are creating from texture. And then I have this percent to pixel uh, because the procedural texture provider needs actual um, pixel values for where to sample from. Um, for where to read or write the pixels. Um, but it was easier to just kind of write this percentage based slider. So we're just converting the percentage to a pixel value based on the textures width and height. Then we create a bunch, uh, a bunch of black pixels. So it is a flattened one dimensional array. Uh, it's not a multi dimensional array like an image is with the width and the height and then red, green, blue and alpha values. It's all one dimension. Uh, a uint8 array, it means an unsigned 8-bit integer, which is just a technical way to say numbers from 0 to 255, which are the standard for color values. Uh, so we just kind of set all that data uh, to black pixels, 
Then we take our procedural texture, we go dot control, dot set pixels, give it our X position, Y position, the width, the height, and our data. And then we update the base texture of our image so that we can see what's going on. So overall, nothing too complicated. Um, the key is just knowing how to send all the data into our procedural texture provider. So I'm going to use this mapping script uh, to kind of choose where I want to sample the pixels, then use the sampler scripts to actually do that. If we take a look at the sampling script, um, a lot of the similarities, uh, I'm still using percent to pixel. Um, you might notice in the mapper this channels equals four. That's for the red, green, blue, and alpha channels. Now when we create our uint8 array, and the main difference here is instead of setting the pixels, I'm just going to get the pixels. Now, this function doesn't directly return any values. It's a void return. Uh, but what it does is we create our empty uint8 array. We just give it our, our size. And then we pass it to get pixels. And then the data is directly written into that array. So as soon as we call get pixels, we can start looping over it point out that pixel information um, and then we can average it together to get our color and then we can set it to the base color of this sampled color image. All I did here was I added the unlit material over in the resources panel because I want the base texture to just be white pixels so that as I set the base color that color is exactly what shows up here. All right. So let's um, start adding some values here. You might notice here we can put in a sample size X and Y. Here it's um, actually arrays of data, so we can sample from multiple areas. So if I am going to uh, start sampling, you can see we just have a black area here uh, because our sample width is zero, so there's no data. So let's change this to 20. Let's just copy the values we have here. Go 0 0.41, 0 0.75. Now you can see we're sampling this color from the user's forehead. Now this color is the average of all the pixels inside this box. We don't want to sample from too many areas and we don't want the boxes to be too large because this is already 400 points that we're averaging together every time the frame updates. But let's go ahead and use our mapping script to choose a few other areas and kind of get a nice, a smoother average of the user skin tone. Okay, so I am sampling from a few uh, different areas. So I have a few points across the forehead, on his nose, now do keep in mind, some people have facial hair or glasses. So try to watch out for like the bridge of the nose and directly around the eye. Uh, but do get a few different points because you can see the light and shadow and skin tone varies across his face. Uh, but overall, we're pretty close. Let's just go through a few different people, make sure we're in the ballpark for everybody. Now we're not going to be exact, but as long as we have something close, it'll be usable. All right, so we've gone through and it looks like we've done a pretty good job of getting a good sampling area. Now, if you wanted to just kind of like create like a color palette lens, um, you wouldn't need to sample from multiple spots. You just need to have the value zero and then remove all the others. But for the skin tone, we want a good averaging going on. All right, so this isn't very exciting. We don't want to just put their skin color in a box. So we have this extra recipient input we can actually use to set the color of like a face mask or a 3D object. So script wise, we just import a component dot material mesh visual and, and I named it recipient. Now you can import just a material asset or anything you want. Um, this is just a pretty general purpose component we can use um, to select things in the objects panel. So let's disable our mapping preview and up here in the effects, I'm going to enable a face mask uh, to do our first kind of test with. Now the face mask, I changed the default texture to that white texture from our unlit material. 
Uh, same idea behind the screen image. We want to... The white texture means we won't change that uh, base color at all. If we change this to something else, we're, it's going to be tinted. So just try to make sure you're using this white texture for the base texture on anything we're going to set the base color. All right, so let's stop rambling and let's choose our recipient. Let's choose our face mask. Now you can see that we are updating the color of the face mask to match the color that we're sampling. Once again, we can go through the different people. We can see overall we're doing a pretty good job. Now you might notice on this guy, the color sampling does look to be lighter than his average skin tone. And that's because in this particular case, just the way the light is reflecting off his forehead, nose and cheeks, we're tending towards some of the lighter colors. So that is something to keep in mind. You want a good variety of light and shadow. Otherwise, you're going to bias the sampled color either lighter or darker, depending on where you're sampling and the lighting conditions. Now, if we change the position of the light, uh, like if we were actually the ones taking the video, we could even this uh, out a lot more. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind. But I'd say overall, most people are matching pretty well. But of course, it depends on the lighting and just the user skin itself. All right, so we can change the face mask. That's not anything particularly exciting. Let's say you've created some sort of 3D model. Let's say you're putting the user's head on like a miniature body and they have hands and you want to make sure it matches the um, their skin tone. So I have here a 3D object. Now I've created the material. I'm not using the default material. The base texture I set to that white color just because the base color I want this to fully control the color of my 3D model. In this case, it's just a box. So let's come to our script and let's swap out the face mask for the box. Now you can see that it is updating with the user's uh, skin tone. And what's more, if we rotate the lights in our scene, you can see it's being affected by that as well. So we can import any 3D model we want. And if there's any parts of it that should match the user's skin, we can use our sampling script, match it, and then it will react to the light in the scene. Now you can turn on the specularity so you can get the shine. Um, everything works because we're just saying that base color. And so we can pretty closely match a user's skin tone. Now, of course, you can see the top is lighter because our light is shining on top of it. So be mindful of where you place the lights if you're going to use this to try and make sure it matches pretty well. And you can always just turn off the lighting and just get a flat color on the box. All right, so that is about it for how to use a procedural texture provider to sample colors. Uh, we didn't go into detail as far as how the average or how the four loops work, um, because again, I'm assuming you're familiar with JavaScript. Um, if you aren't, you can directly copy and paste the scripts from the uh, website. The link is in the description. Uh, just when you add it to your scene, make sure you have frame updated and then you can choose everything here. And if you don't want to look at the sampled color image, you can just disable that and just have your 3D object. Uh, so it's not a very hard thing to use in the Studio API. It's just lesser known because there's no guides, no templates for it. Uh, it's something that I didn't even know existed until recently. Uh, so go ahead and use that and make something cool.